Okay, so you wanna know how to render gold. I, mean, I just posted this on Instagram, looks difficult, but is it really? I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick, pretty easily. First thing you gotta do, go to my Gumroad, grab a brush pack that I have here. It's free, you just click that button, put zero here, click add to cart, check out, and it'll go straight to your email, or you could just click view content. December 2020, download. When you click them, they'll automatically load up in your Photoshop. I don't know if this works the same within Clip Studio Paint. I think it's pretty similar if you use the same brush. To actually find that brush pack so we're all on the same page. There's going to be just the brushes, the eraser tool, and then the mixer brush, and finally the smudge brush. This is actually not the mixer brush that we're gonna be using, it is the smudge brush. And if you grab round bristle too, that's what's gonna help us get that effect. And you have to make sure these settings are strength 100%, mode normal, and that's pretty much it. Now let me just show you the difference between the mixer brush and the smudge brush for this. So the mixer brush will take this and blend things together like it's blending oil paint which is a great tool as well. But let's say you want to get that effect. If you go back to the smudge brush, whatever you click, it's going to take and drag across everywhere and it doesn't fade off. There's no opacity, there's no pen pressure. So that's the brush we're going to need to use. But then how do you actually get it to look like gold? Like how, how do you do that effect? So let's just take a quick look at gold. So obviously this is a metallic surface. While this isn't a full in-depth explanation of material indication, we can touch on it a little bit. But in order to get that effect, we have to understand how light works on a basic object but I'll just do a quick breakdown here. If you have a sphere, if you have like a wireframe, whatever, very basic, no problem. You have a light source over here and you have, let's say the local value or color is that, that is going to cast a light here. Any polygon facing the light, obviously it's gonna be lit, right? But as you transition towards the shadow side, there's going to be a core shadow or terminator. And there's gonna be a highlight here and then a shadow side here. For gold, these transitions are not gonna be necessarily of local value, but it's going to be a reflection. That's what you have to keep in mind. Some sides are gonna be reflecting light, some will not. And the absence of light will be in dark areas, as you can see in these photos. The main reason I have these photos here is to grab some colors. Now we could sit there and color pick, that's fine too. There's nothing wrong with that. If we just look at it and speak the words out loud. So we got some orange, brown, yellow, really bright yellow, a deep green in there, brown color. There's a bit of an orange. There's some brighter yellows, uh, some really bright yellows, almost close to white. There's actually a deep little green in here, as you can see, it might just be the photo, but it looks cool, why not, let's borrow it. A bit more saturation in there. Cool, those are the colors that we need. And if we go here, there's obviously a different variety. But the idea is you have a full value range of deep browns up to bright yellows. If we just kind of abstractly lay in those exact colors again, you could kind of just be random about it. So we got a little blob of dark brown, darker brown with orange in there. Uh, maybe like a brighter yellow, brighter orange, the yellows. Maybe peek in with some bright yellows that are very close to white. Maybe you kind of speckle that here and there, deeper orange. Cool. If you were to just take this and grab that smudge brush, click there and drag, you'll get that effect. It's easy as that. You could actually keep going, move this around, get it to look all shiny. I know it's a very quick, simple trick. It looks complex, but really, if you layer it correctly, it'll look like it's a gold object. Now, earlier I showed the sphere for a very specific reason, because while we can get something to look all shiny by mixing all this color around, how do we get it to read on actual form? So let's draw that sphere again real quick. You can barely see it. That's more visible. Now if we take these colors, let's just copy, paste, put it right under here. I'm going to do the same brush strokes, but along the geometry and the orientation of the sphere. So now I could just grab that and go along it and make sure the core shadow is kind of in there, but it's more of a core reflection based on what those polygons are facing. Let me get some stuff like that. And depending on how you layer it, is important too. I'm doing this very quick and sloppy, that's perfectly fine. Uh, but depending on the layering, it will kind of appear more effective. And you know, it's not perfect, but as you zoom out, it reads like it has the form of a sphere. And you can emphasize that by going in there and clarifying some of these brush strokes. And maybe emphasizing some of the highlights. Let's turn that layer off. And kind of cleaning it up with uh, either the smudge brush again, or we bring that mixer brush in. Maybe have some of the edges blurred and soft. And you could even have a bit of a bounce light. So we grab some of the brighter oranges, put it here, kind of speckle them so they have a nice texture when you pull them with the smudge brush. Merge that down, grab that smudge brush and pull it right up. And get it nice and impasto looking. Impasto is actually a painting style with oil paint where it's a little bit dirty, nothing's too clean, pulling a lot of colors together. It's a beautiful effect, I really love it. 
Anyway, that's how you get that effect. Make sure your forms and geometry are clear to you so you know where the highlights are. Pull that along with the smudge brush and you are good to go. Uh, before you go, be sure to check out the link in the description to sign up for my newsletter on my upcoming course on digital painting launching June 5th. So you just go to this site, put in your information, hit submit, and you'll be notified on any updates of what might be going on. In this course, we'll be talking about fundamentals, foundations, all the way to a concept art project, all kind of following a map, treating it like a gamified journey. So anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.